Yeah. All right. Hey, what's going on, guys? Ladies and gents, you got Mr. Law Jones coming at you live. I uh, hope all is well with you all. I know we got a lot of stuff that's going on out here. You know, uh, a lot of bad elements out here. You know, coronavirus and just everything. I know it's just a lot of stuff. Everybody on edge right now. But like I said, I hope you're protecting yourself. Um, you know, and all that good stuff. You know, wash your hands and everything. But um, just doing a little video. I haven't been on here in a little bit. Um, this is one of the vehicles I bought a little while ago. This is a 94 Cadillac DeVille. Has a 4.9 liter uh, V8 in it. None North Star. Um, I was up here uh, changing the fuel pump in this car. And um, on these, a lot of these GM cars, you have to drop the tank. And on these, uh, even on these K-body cars, you know, like the Seville Eldorado and this DeVille here, um, this was kind of like the K and G body as GM was calling these cars. And uh, you got to take a lot of stuff off. You got to remove the exhaust out the way, cut it and re-weld and all that stuff. So it was going to be a lot of hassle. So what I ended up doing was... Uh, ended up cutting up. I know this car he got very low miles. I know y'all probably like, damn, why he cut up a good car? I didn't really cut it up. I like to. This here, this is gonna be for like somebody who like to work on their own stuff, more like a DIY type of person, or you know, just someone who like to save money. So uh, since I like working on my own vehicles and of course save money like anybody else do, um, I decided to kind of cut a cut an access hole in here. So I won't have to drop the tank down because this thing here I got about 12 gallons of fuel in it. So um, every gallon, um, they estimated that between like seven and eight pounds to a gallon. So, um, so with having that much fuel in here, so that was gonna be probably about right at 100 pounds and maybe under that. So, and then that's just the fuel by itself. That's not including the uh, fuel tank. And then you gotta take the straps down and move this and move that. So I didn't wanna, you know, really disrupt it. Um, so yeah, this fuel pump was making a lot of noise on here. So I had started driving this car as a daily sometime to kind of. Uh, work with another daily vehicle that I use. Um, I have a Suburban. I'm sure if you, if any of y'all follow me, um, I had that Suburban I did the LS swap in back about two years ago. Um, running very well, no problems with it. And I'm just kind of just alternating this, you know, between the Suburban and this Calic here. So uh, this pump here, this is very original to the car. This this is actually the factory fuel pump on it. So it finally starting to die out. So um, it's going to work one day. Me and my partner in crime here was going out and. Um, was going out and taking care of some business and get out there starting it up it will die right out so it wasn't holding any fuel pressure but uh, if you see it right here you can see that old ac sign right here this is the original pump to this car so that means this thing lasted 26 years that's crazy right um so i guess that's what happened when you keep them you know keep plenty of gas in them so they don't burn out because uh, if a lot of people, if a lot of you people don't know that, if you run your tank down over time, your pumps are going to work even harder. And then what's going to happen is they're going to die out. So um, it's always important to try to keep some gas in there, at least a quarter tank of fuel in here. But this car here doesn't have a gauge in it, so it has the numbers in here. So um, so it just goes from full, and then it goes down to like, I think the next number after full, it goes 18, 17, and all the way down to, you know, E, of course. But um, yeah, like I said, I cut this I cut this access hole here. I didn't mean to ramble on like that, uh, ladies and gents. But uh, what I ended up doing, I cut like an eight by nine uh, size right here. Just basically kind of follow around this ridge right here. Um, got plenty of room over here. Um, really, like I said, you don't have to cut that much down because this is sheet metal is really thin. So yeah, you gotta be careful on these edges here when you cut this here if you decide to do this. Um, this ain't really the right way to do it. So I don't recommend you doing it unless that you know what you're doing or, you know, you're just being careful because what you don't want to do, you don't want to cut your gas lines, you cut your gas lines or you cut like back here where you have a connector at right here. And if you cut too far, you can cut your wire. Now you're going in and you're going to have a bad day. So what I end up doing, um, I cut eight inches across right here going this way and I cut nine going that way. So it's basically like an eight by nine cut. And uh, I just kind of just roll this up over here, just kind of flip this up. So it'll just give me just enough room to just kind of like go ahead and, you know, like I said, do what I need to do. That way, instead of taking three, four hours to change the fuel pump, I can have this done in about 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do to seal this back is, uh, like I said, I'll just flip this back down and such. Um, I'm going to use like some roofing tape around here. I got a couple pieces of sheet metal I'm going to stick in the sides here. Do like some self-tapping screws over here on this side hand right there. And uh, just kind of tap this down, just get it flat as possible. And then just so it doesn't make any fuel uh, smells or fumes in the car, which it shouldn't. Um, but anyway, I like to be a little cautious of it because, like I said, it's just not only me. I have family I have to worry about. So it's just not myself. I got my family. I have to, you know, have to think about them more than anything. So I uh, definitely want to be careless. So I'm going to use roofing tape around here. It's kind of similar to like they use like Dynamat. It's kind of on that order, but it's exactly not like it. So I'm just going to put it around here. 
it'll seal it up. So as it gets hot, as it get warmer outside here, as, as we're coming around to the spring and summer months, uh, the more warm it get, um, you know, it'll seal up. So, so that's what we're doing here today. So that helped out a lot. So I really liked that. I did I follow a couple guys on YouTube, some other YouTubers on here, and that's what they did. And I really appreciate that, uh, you know, taking this here. But I don't recommend this. This is not for everybody to do, but it helps out a lot. If you want to get this done quick and just have a fuel pump in and out your vehicle in 30 minutes, as well as three, four hours, this will be your way to go. But um, I got the replacement pump here, and I'm going to bring that here. And show that one to you. Okay, I'm back. And uh, so this pump here, I went with Delphi on this here. So this is a manufacturer. Uh, this is an OEM manufacturer for a lot of GM Delco stuff here. So this is the um, Delphi pump right here. And uh, that's the part number right there, which is going to be FG. 0010-02. So this is the updated design. And this one here is supposed to be a lot better because on the factory one, when I take that one out, it's gonna most likely have a strainer right here. And on these new ones here, these strainers are inside this pump here. So it made a lot better uh, design with it. And uh, I was able to get this through Herco Automotive here. They based out of Florida. And I guess they had a special on these here. Uh, got it for about 40 bucks or so. So uh, yeah, this is, this, I, hope I, I don't know if I'll get 26 years out for this here, but. Um, I don't like to, I don't run my tanks down real low anyway, so I uh, hope I get some good wear. But if I don't, then like I said, at least to know that I can change the pump out in about 30 minutes. Um, you know, in and out, be done with it, back on the road. So, but anyway, I just wanted to update y'all on what's going on. I've been wanting to do a review on this car here and another car that I have, but I just haven't had time. You know, everybody just get busy. So, but uh, anyway, just click like, subscribe. If you got any questions, comments, anything like that. Please feel free to ask. I take all criticism, good or bad. Um, anyway, y'all take it easy, and uh, I will do a part two once I get it running. Thanks a lot for watching. All right, all right, back again. This is Mr. Law Jones. This is part two of the uh, 94 Calais DeVille uh, fuel pump replacement. And uh, I got the new one in. Uh, this is the old original pump here to this car right here. Uh, this pump here lasted 26 years. This just show you how, you know, if a manufacturer they want to, they can make stuff last a long time. And uh, unfortunately, like I said, this one here ran this course here. It was getting really loud. It had the um, fuel gauge, uh, the fuel meter on here way off because it was showing 10 gallons on here. And when I put this new pump in here, which is this Delphi unit that's in there now, um, this one here actually registered 14 gallons. So I'm glad that I did kind of opted to go with this access panel that I did here uh, for this car. And uh, like I said, yeah, this was really easy to do. Um, I probably had this thing in and out in about 30 minutes at best. And I probably could have had it done quicker than that, but I was just kind of just took my time shucking and driving and just, like I said, spending time with family and stuff. Like I said, you got the one plug right here. Um, you got your return line here, your vent, and this is your uh, feed line right here. So um, basically just clipped in. You got three clips on here. You just clip and push them out. And uh, yeah, like I said, in and out. And then like I said, I'll be pushing this back down here. Um, I'm gonna put some little sheet metal up in here, some self taps. And then like I said, I'm gonna run that roofing tape around here so that way I seal it off real nice. Um, so yeah, if I ever have to do this again, uh, hopefully many years down the road, I don't know if it'll last 26 years like the original. Um, I don't even know if I have this car 26 years, but you know, I, I tend to keep my cars more than five years. But uh, anyway, started right up, had to prime it, had to prime it for a few minutes. And once it primed in, like I said, it turns right over like it did before. Uh, like I said, yeah, it's now it's reading 14 gallons, so which is the right gallons in here because when I pulled this out of here uh, Fuel was like pretty high, but I don't know why this thing is reading 10. So I'm glad that I opted to do this here. So um, But anyway, um, like I said, if you do have any comments or any questions anything like this here I don't really recommend this here unless you are a DIY type of person uh, Man or woman if you do work on your own cars, uh, this is not a biased video by any means But like I said, there's a lot of ladies I know that works on their own vehicles and like to save money like I do so uh, if you don't mind cutting up your vehicle and you know that you're gonna have it for a while, this will be for you. Or if you just want to just like I said, just do it to save money. This is a way to kind of do it. But like I say, just be very careful. If you smoke, please do not smoke around here because it is a lot of fuel. Uh, you let off something or you spark something, uh, kaboom, you know, out of there. But anyway, um, like I said, this is it. Um, I can I'm gonna turn the key right quick. I'm gonna run it and uh, let you hear it because it's really quiet. You really don't even hear that pump at all compared to the one that was taken out of the vehicle. And uh, I'm going to the side here. I'm going to pass the passenger side of the car. I'm going to turn it. Let's turn that radio off. 
turn the key. And that's it, she run it. And she has 60,719 miles on it, still a baby. She an old girl, but uh, she's running. So now she's showing 14 gallons of them in there. So as opposed to 10 that the other pump was reading off in here. So just to let you know how far that thing was, you know, off and how much it had worn, you know. But uh, anyway, like I said, it's running. Running really good. So I got a little wine in here. I got to flush out the uh, power stand on this here. I put a new pump on here back a couple weeks ago and I still haven't flushed out the rest of the, you know, remaining old fluid out of here. So I just need to do that today. It's nice out. I know uh, I know everybody on high alert about this coronavirus, but yeah, if you got to be out here in these streets out here, uh, be very careful out here, be safe. Man, just uh, cover yourself, wash your hands, you know, practice good hygiene, even though we should all be doing that anyway, but uh, you'd be surprised on the people that don't practice that. So, but anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, like I said, click like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family about me. Um, just a, just just a just a just a city boy in the country uh, town. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, y'all take it easy. Have a good weekend, and uh, I'm out of here.